If you would go ahead and be turning in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 28. Um, and for a continued prayer requests, you know, we've uh, still celebrating uh, from Sunday and um, a lot going on there. And we thank the Lord for the really good crowd Sunday and for Him speaking to hearts, continue to speak to hearts. And we've, uh, we've seen folks that have given their lives to Christ um, fairly regularly over the last uh, several months. And so be in prayer for those new believers as our, our church tries to take them into the fellowship and um, get them in, in a place of discipleship. And uh, so pray for our new believers. We've got some more baptisms coming up this, this Sunday. And uh, so we're thanking the Lord for that and a few, in a, in a few more weeks after that. So uh, we're grateful that that's going on. So anytime that uh, God is at work, uh, we can rest assured the devil's at work too. And so let's, uh, let's pray uh, for all that that means surrounding these new believers. And uh, if you see folks that you don't know, new folks at church, take time to uh, engage them. And, uh, you know, sometimes we're all guilty of flying in, flying out. Uh, let's try not to do that. Take time to connect with one another as body of Christ and um, get to know each other and support each other. And um, so if you're new, uh, maybe, maybe, let me just throw this out there. If you've not connected with a Sunday school class, you need to do that. That's a, that's a good starting point on Sunday morning in between the two services. You can do it either way. You can come first service and go to Sunday school, Sunday school or go to Sunday school and second service. Doesn't matter. But plug in there. That's a, a great thing that, um, you know, in my, I've always called it the original small group um, because it's, it's been in place a long, long time and it provides that atmosphere of, of oneness in a peer group. Um, Sunday schools classes always end up being some type of a peer related thing. So uh, find one and engage in it. And we're looking forward to, uh, after the building is complete over here, we're actually going to be starting a few other classes. And uh, so uh, just find one. If you hadn't gone yet, uh, just by statistics, we are running, uh, I think, the last two quarters on Sunday school, 50% of our attendance and then 51% of our attendance. So we're right there at half of our folks go to Sunday school. If you're on that half that don't go, you're missing out, I'm telling you. If nothing else, um, it's just it's just good to hang out, you know? And uh, um, if you're like our class, it's a hoot too. <laughs> to say the least, it can be a hoot. So uh, get in there, plug into a class. Um, I tell you what, I, I, tonight, I got to think about what I want to speak on tonight. And um, got thinking about, because my wife has these little flags that she puts out in the yard. And I don't know if you, some of y'all do these flags too, and, and so we've carried these holders with us all over the place when we've moved around. And my wife's going to change those flags uh, to the next thing, and as promptly as possible. Uh, and they, they, they get up there, and the next thing I know, come home, you've only seen the, you know, the, the Easter one for a few weeks, and boom, you go to the next thing, you know, and you're just changing these things out. And I got to thinking, you know, it's, it's kind of not fair for Easter to get changed so much. Um, I don't like that Easter gets mixed into other holidays the way it does. Um, okay, call me Mr. Religious or whatever, but you know, Easter, here you got Easter, the prominent Christian holiday um, that to us uh, is the pinnacle of what we believe, the resurrection, um, that's thrown in the mix with St. Patrick's Day. Um, on Wednesdays, uh, we go over every week uh, to Randolph Home and to Stonebridge, as we did this afternoon, and we have a service with them. <coughs> And so we, we sing with them, we preach with them. I went over today and, and, uh, and preached with them, and uh, Wally uh, Wachowski goes over and plays music with them, and it's, we have a great time. This, but, but Stonebridge actually has a little Christmas tree in there. If you've been over there, you've seen it, it's white. Well, it stays up all the time. It, it doesn't go away. So they're just taking this white Christmas tree, and they just change the decorations on it to match the next holiday. Um, and I'm watching that thing as it goes along, and, and you know, today they still are letting Easter kind of go a little bit longer. And I was glad to see that, that Easter got to go on a little bit longer, and they didn't already switch it out to the next thing, which I don't really know what that's going to be. Um, I'm assuming something patriotic coming up. Um, but anyway, uh, again, you've got patriotism versus a religious holiday. Or it might get mixed in with 
you know, Groundhog Day, or I mean, I don't know. We got all these secular things that come about, and you can decorate, you can move them around, but somehow just Easter comes and goes. It always bugs the stew out of me every year when we have a big event like Easter, and everybody goes, Yay, we hunted Easter eggs, and we're done. And you move on. And, and for, for me, I, I just, Easter has to be an all year long thing. Easter has to be an all year long thing. We have to understand the power that Easter provides for us in our lives. Because if we just kind of get hyped up there for a few weeks, and the hype surrounds Easter, I mean, it does. And, and last week was a prime indication of the hype surrounding Easter. And when I say hype, you know, I am thanking the Lord. You know, we broke the all-time record for our church Sunday. Uh, 607 people here Sunday. Wonderful. People on the altar, people getting saved. It's just been, I mean, it's like, wow, we're still rejoicing over everything. But man, the... There's, it's like there's a, there's like there's an Easter hangover the week after for churches, you know, and I'm just, I'm kind of going, what's going to happen this Sunday? Where's the excitement about Easter this next Sunday? Brother Eddie, I'm already getting nervous about it. Can I tell you, I'm getting mad about it. And it even happened yet. I'm mad about the people who won't be excited this week. And the people who won't be in church. And the people who won't let the power of the resurrection carry even one week in their life. Yea, we went and ate ham with Aunt so-and-so. But isn't it more than that? I mean, shouldn't it be all year long? All right, let's read the Easter story. Uh, this, this might end up being more of a soapbox kind of thing tonight, but deal with me. All right, I'm just, let me vent with you guys tonight. Is that okay if I just vent? You ever heard a preacher hack? You want to hack it? Y'all know what hacking preachers are? Has anybody ever heard a preacher hack? Nobody? All right, go home and YouTube hacking preachers. Okay, you know what I'm talking about that. It's a, it's a real thing. I won't do it tonight because y'all might, anyway, <laughs> might kick me out. But it, it is a thing. I won't hack. All right. What is, what's the lights going out for? Is that, all right. Matthew 28. <laughs> Verses 1 to 10. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. I love to tell stories in my mind. When I'm reading Scripture, I'm visualizing it. I mean, it is coming alive in my mind. And, okay, I slide in some Hollywood effects, but they're usually there in Scripture. And I'm telling you what, there's some heavy Hollywood effects built into this story that are already there. I didn't have to put them there. They put them in Scripture. So as we're going through this, you do the salt and peppering to this, and, and just, it's awesome. And behold, verse 2, there was a great earthquake. Are you seeing it already? For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. That is awesome. That's awesome. Already it's just awesome. Earthquake, angel, rolling back the stone, and dude sits on it. I mean, it's like, it, that's just incredible already. So the story has already gotten to that level. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, no duh, the guards trum trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. Why did he not say that to the guards? Don't be afraid. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess they were dead acting. He's like, well, sorry, about it. sorry guys. So he says it to them, or maybe he wanted them to stay scared, whatever it was. Uh, he says to the women, don't be afraid, for I know that you see Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. 
And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. My gracious, how do you, how do you wrap your mind around that? Do you ever have these times when things are so intense that you just... <sighs> I, I don't know how they made it through this. Well, I don't know why there's not a part in this story where, and they passed out along with the other guys. Because there is no way I'd have made it even that far. They're, they're scared to death. They're trembling. I'd have just, I'd have fell apart. You know, there's a lot of things in life that will let you down. I, the, the older I get, um, the more, this is horrible, but the more cynical I become about things. Is that an old age thing? Or is that experience? Or, I don't know, maybe it's a combination of, of all things. But the more cynical and the more realistic I get about things. And I don't always like that. Because I would love the fun me of years past that's just like, woohoo, to live life on that level and, and, and not always be going... <laughs> You know, kind of always judging things and just kind of being down on stuff. Huh? Becoming Don, not Don. Yeah, I know, and that's not good. I don't want to be Don, you know? <laughs> Wait a minute, we got a Don. Don, you in here? Sorry, brother. Oh, he came this morning. Good. Oh, he's, not, he's probably listening tonight. Now I'm in trouble with Don. I don't, you know, I want to be that person that gets re excited and ignited by things, and, and um, but I've kind of got to be that person. There's a lot of letdowns. And if you've, you know, we've, we've all been let down, whether it's by a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a, or a relative or a, a boss, you're, you're fired. Or what, there's, been, there's been a lot of letdowns in your life. Uh, there's even products. I, I, you know, the, the products out there, my goodness, how many of us have been let down by products? Got to try the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's great in Walmart. They got the section that says, as seen on TV, you know, and you can walk over there and see what it's supposed to do. And, you know, we get hyped up about things. And this is going to be, I, I'm not making fun of anything at Walmart though, Bob. <laughs> not at all. Oh, man, <laughs> I can't say anything in this church. We have people from everywhere. <sighs> so, um, but, but pro, you know, stuff in life will let you down. Um, and uh, I, I remember years ago, we lived in Colorado. We were at the mall, and, and Susan is doing her, her I won't say annual shopping, but her shopping for makeup. Um, and I'm the tag-along husband in the deal, right? So we go in Dillard's, and Susan is going up to the Clinique counter, right? Ladies are already starting to shake their heads at me. And you know what Clinique does every so often, right? Ladies, they do the what? Free gift. Free gift. What's it called, that event? The bonus buys, right? I think it's the bonus buys. I have something like that. Anyway. Well, it's because I have to keep going with her. So anyway, we go to the Dill go to Dillard's, and we're going up to the makeup counter, and um, and she's over there, and she's starting to look at what she needs, and and man, my wife is is frugal to the nth degree. She'll use her makeup stuff way beyond what's probably when you're supposed to. And then she'll cut the end of that dude off, and she'll dig out every little last part of that thing in there to use up. Because, hey, man, per millo, milli ounce, if there is such a thing, that stuff's expensive. And so she's, so to her credit, um, she's using it up. She's got to buy that, but she goes into there because, you know, if you buy this product and it's over $35, you get this gift in our little bag and you get a free product up to $20 free and it might be, I don't know, lipstick or whatever. So she goes and do this and there I am. I'm, I'm, I'm standing behind just kind of watching the whole deal because she's got to pick out the makeup that matches the season and the tone of her skin. And <laughs> look, I t I'm thankful for women paint, okay? I'm thankful for it. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing. I'm not fussing. It's just... <laughs> I'm calling it what it really is. It is women paint. Um, <laughs> look. <laughs> men, I would suggest you not say amen to any of this for a minute. I've already been in trouble with this, and 
Yeah, I'm long gone. I've been preaching for 30 years, so my, my wife, uh, she knows. Uh, so anyway, I'm standing there back in line, and, and I just look over, and, and over by the cash register is, is the section of stuff that they carefully place out there for the unsuspecting shopper that's in line to buy their products, and they look over and go, oh, ooh. And all of these products come with a promise. Right, Bob, you got them too. Oh yeah, that last minute stuff that little Junior sees, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Mama, get it and uh, it ought to be against the law, but there it is. So here's all the ooh-ah stuff. And I look over at it, and one, one particular thing catches my attention. Yeah, the anti-aging serum. All right, anti-aging serum. And I'm like, hmm, this makes for interesting thought for a minute. So, look, if y'all have that, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> anyway, uh, I walk over to the anti-aging serum. <clears throat> That's as much as a month's tithing at church. <clears throat> and I pull that off the shelf, and I'm looking at it. And it goes through the whole reasons why this is the greatest thing since the resurrection. And anyway, and it's just, you know, it's got promises there, you know. And uh, I don't want to know what's in it, to be honest with you. And, you know, how in, and by the next day it makes you go, you know, <laughs> to make you look younger. But I'm thinking, huh, I wonder if I take a little bit of this stuff when they're not watching. <laughs> 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 Uh, Y'all are not like me, right? But this is, this is the life of Donnie. I'm, I'm, I'm going, maybe, maybe I'll take a little bit of this stuff and rub it through my hair. <laughs> maybe in a few days my hair will turn back to brown, right? Um, so I'm just sitting there thinking through all this in my head. I don't do it, but I do fake stuff like that. Anyway, and I, I turn it over, and, 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 uh, and this is seven or eight years ago. Uh, I don't want to know what it costs now. Somebody's going to Google this, guarantee you. But uh, seven or eight years ago, it was $138. About that big. The box was about that big. I don't know how big the little tube was inside. So anyway, there it was. And I'm like, <laughs> at that point, I'm just scared I'm going to drop it and have to buy it. You know, so, oh, please let me get this back to the counter. So I put it back, and I'm thinking, Man, I wonder how many of those they sell. You know, how many people are determined they're going to buy that sucker, try it out. Um, anyway, um, and y you know, all the time, y have y'all noticed how young my wife looks? Have y'all noticed it? Huh? She does. Um, I, I told somebody the other day, I said, man, I get blamed for having a trophy wife all the time, and I love it. I love it. But you know what? She doesn't use the anti-aging serum. I don't know what she's got going on, but she looks 10 years my junior, and I love it. Anyway, back to where we are. Where are we at? Oh, yeah. So they, that's an empty promise, that kind of stuff. It's just, it don't work. We got to take a little, little vacay a couple years ago down to St. Augustine. Anybody been? Uh, St. Augustine, it's a neat place to visit. It's been a couple days. Um, and uh, it, it's just neat. It's got some neat historical stuff, and you can do the ghost tour. We did that. That was fun. Um, and anyway, we're going through St. Augustine, and there, you know, evidently years ago, long time ago, some dude named Ponce de Leon, remember, remember his name? What did he discover? The Fountain of Youth down there in St. Augustine. Um, and it's kind of neatly tucked away, but you can pay to visit it and all that. I don't know that they'll let you jump in it or anything after all these years, but you can probably buy some water <laughs> and drink it if you want. I don't know. Anyway, there it is. Since it was discovered a long time ago, I don't know when it was discovered, never seen a news blur blurb yet that has said person gets one day subtracted from their life by drinking fountain of youth water. Not once has it ever happened. Man, I'm, and I'm sure back then when things were even more mysterious and superstitious, people probably were all about it. They were willing to go to great lengths to probably you know, try this thing and hope it worked. But 
There's a lot of things going to let us down in this life. And again, it's stuff like that that has made me con more crabby <laughs> the older I get about, you know, quit trying to sell me stuff that ain't going to work. Um, but I do know something. We look back at a passage like this, and I start thinking of Southernisms. I would say about the resurrection, brother, the, the proof is in the pudding. I don't know where that came from. Somebody looked that up, but the, the proof is there. Because I do know the resurrection made a life-changing difference in me. And you're shaking your head because you've had it happen to you, and you've watched it time and time and time and time again, and there's a reason why here we are, thousands of years later, still recognizing this event. It's because for once, something finally came through and can be depended on. I love it. I love it. And the answers through the resurrection for our life are all through the Scripture. Why can Jesus make a difference in my life, in my family, in my marriage, in my parenting, since we're having that this coming Sunday, if those of you that are signed up, it's going to be awesome. Why can that be different? It's because of the resurrection, the power that God says can flow through you and in a Christian family when we put Christ first in our lives. It can flow through you and through your family. So I want us to just think of a couple things tonight, okay? I'm not going to get real deep, but on this thought of Easter all year, here's, here's some, a way we can have Easter all year, all right? Because it's not like we got, you know, you get your Easter basket and you get your candy in it and you kind of gobble it up and put the basket away till next year and pull it back out and do the same thing again. Um, you know, because even the big Easter, y'all remember the big Easter bunnies? When you, Mom used to give me those big ones in my basket. Mom hasn't given me a basket for years now. I don't know, what, anyway. Um, but you get those big bunnies. And, and as a kid, I remember you know, getting those. You're like, oh, look at the size of this bunny. And then you take the first bite. What? <laughs> what? It's hollow. You're talking about crushing as a kid. They're, that's that's horrible. Bob, do you sell ho hollow Easter bunnies? <laughs> Again, <laughs> Again, another thing that needs to be outlawed. Hollow. Hollow, look. I'm getting all... <laughs> this is horrible. I can't stand it. Things that bother me tonight. Hollow Easter bunnies. Um... It, it, it lets me down. But here, here's, here's some ways I think we can remember going through the year. <coughs> Number one, remember the nightmare. That's odd advice. I don't know about you, but I'm, a, I'm an avid dreamer, and I'm a vivid dreamer. Ugh, uh, I wish I wasn't. I had a very bothersome a avid dream last night and someone was, was trying to kill me. Sorry. Just, I don't know if you're... Blame me or not. <laughs> I know. It wasn't Walmart's fault this time. But now, I'm not, one of, I'm not one of these lucid dreamers. Some of the younger crowd here might know what I'm talking about when I talk about lucid dreaming. Um, I'm not that. I hope I never am. But... I am avid and it's very realistic to the point where I wake up. There's, there's times when I'll lay there for hours afterward bothered and cannot just calm back down. Um, but on the spiritual side of things, there was a very horrific event that happened for three days prior to this. Sunday was incredible as we celebrated Easter. And Sunday, they, I, I just can't even imagine this story. I'm so jealous to not be able to see that in person. But three days prior, I cannot imagine how these same people felt. The event that took place on those crosses was as horrible 
as you can imagine it to be. A few years ago, Mel Gibson and them, they did, you know, the, the passion. Um, and you got to have a good stomach to watch that. But honestly, it was not over the top for what really happened. It was a nightmare. It was awful. Nobody would want to see that. Definitely nobody would want to go through it. That part of our religion is disgusting to some people. I'll just throw that out. People say, that's just, you know, I don't, we don't need that kind of thing in, in religion. Can I tell you tonight, we, we do have to have that in our religion. Because Sunday could not have happened without Friday happening. Friday was in the plan before the world was created. God knew, looking down through the, the ages, what would be the plan. And He already knew the victory side of things too, thankfully, but and decided it would happen. And first of all, I, you know, I don't like to think of negative things, but sometimes we must in life. And we should never ever get over the horrific things that happened on the Friday prior to Easter. You want to carry Easter with you, you, you can't separate it from Friday. Because Jesus did that for you and me. And it was every bit as terrible as you can imagine. As we go back and we look at the scene on that hill and we watch that emaciated man, emaciated thing hanging on the middle cross, our heart needs to just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Friday. Because without it, no sin's forgiven. No hope in this life. No power in my life of resurrection. None of this, what we're doing tonight, would be a complete waste of time without Friday. And listen, don't ever let anybody tell you that the crucifixion didn't take place. They are more than misinformed. By this point in history, um, it doesn't have to be proven anymore. The lies that started surfacing in the 1800s or so, trying to cover over the crucifixion and resurrection, um, <laughs> that's just nonsense anymore because ancient artifacts and everything more and more are proven it all the time. It's, it, even secular people don't even try to argue it. Recorded history verifies Jesus was crucified. There was no question He was dead. The soldiers knew it. The Romans knew it. Roman history knows it. The Jews knew it and know it. But then you have the whole lies that were made up to try to cover the story. But they stuck him in the tomb. And there's this two ton stone laying in front of it to seal the body of Jesus. <laughs> and somehow they're going to make up stories like a bunch of. <laughs> weak disciples of Christ are going to come up and overthrow the guards and drag 4,000 pounds of stone away from the hole. I mean, it's just ridiculous the stories that have come up to try to disprove it. I mean, there's a reason there's a reason why in Scripture we have recorded the statement, who will move the stone for us? Who's going to allow us to do that and anoint His body? There's a reason why, because you can't just do that. But anyway... Jesus died, folks. He died. And we have to always go back to that moment and let it grip your heart and be, always be thankful for Friday. Remember the nightmare. It's okay. Because in this instance, it does good for us to remember it. So the ladies go. At this point in the story, um, they didn't have to remember the nightmare. They were remembering the nightmare. It was a nightmare when they were headed toward the tomb. So up until the moment I just read to you, they were completely immersed in real life nightmare. Still trying to get over those events. But they're right in front of them. What is going on? Roman guards so petrified with fear that they're either unconscious unconscious or paralyzed with fear. The stone has moved, and there's this 
lightning-ish angel. Incredible. Incredible. Um, so they go from this one strange emotion to another. We look back and, and we can piece it together pretty quick. I can't imagine how, what they were trying to process at the moment. So knowing what he should say first to them, the angel says, don't be afraid. Perfect. Okay. Whew. Okay, because that's what needed to be said first, um, for sure. For any human being was, that was in that moment, don't be afraid. Because for the last three days, they have been petrified. Petrified. Family of Jesus, who's next? You know, they're risking their own lives just to go to there. They're petrified with fear. Don't be afraid. So as we remember the nightmare, and we come into this next moment, into the resurrection, it brings us to the second thing I think we can do to remember Easter and carry with us, and that's to recognize the promise. Recognize the promise. Fact was, he's alive. The tomb was empty. The angel even told them, go ahead, go in and look. And that's an incredible promise that draws forward to today. Go ahead, try to prove the resurrection wasn't true, that he wasn't there. There's too much proof. Just save it because there's too much proof. It's still truth today. It's a promise that holds life for us. Jesus is not defeated. He's not dead. And just, I know you know this, but it is the one thing that separates us from all religions. The fact that we claim and have proof of a resurrected Lord that we serve. All the other ones are gone and will go, but not Jesus. He is alive. Um, I heard a story about a little boy goes to Sunday school class a uh, week before Easter, and the, the teacher hands out the little eggs, little crack them open eggs, plastic ones, and says, all right, I need you all to take these home and put something in these and come back next week, and we're going to talk about them on Easter, and you put something in there that reminds you of Easter. Pretty cool. Yeah, all right, bring it back. So they get there, and they come back into the room, and they're starting to do it, and, and, and one little, little girl, you know, she has a flower that she's put in hers. They open it up, and they, oh, it's so pretty, pretty little. She says, well, this reminds me of the pretty, pretty flowers this time of year that are starting to bloom, and it's really nice. And another kid had managed to catch a butterfly, and had stuffed the butterfly in there, and, and th you know, it's still alive, but they open it up, and they talk about the butterfly, and, and I see all the, the new things that are flying around in, in, in the spring, and it's it's nice to look at those. And, and then, uh, uh, <laughs> then there was the one kid who brought a rock. And we, I guess that was the stone on the... Was, anyway, that's what he brought. But then there was little Philip. He opened his, and there wasn't anything in there. And so the kids started laughing and said, Philip, what are you doing? He just... And, you know, they started to kind of make fun of little Philip. And he says, no, no, I did it right. And they said, no, you didn't do, any, do it right. You were supposed to put something in there. And he said, I did do it right. There wasn't anything in the tomb. Philip's got, got it right, right there. Listen, our religion says we're based on what wasn't there. Right? Everything else gives us empty promises in life, but th for once, the empty thing is what we needed. We need the empty tomb. It is what's most precious to us. That's the promise of the resurrection. He's not dead. He's alive. As the old song says, he walks with me and talks with me and tells me I'm his own. He's not dead. He's not gone. He's not out there somewhere forgotten. He's alive. God doesn't intend for you to live a life in defeat now or in eternity. He wants to bring you to life, and He wants to give you life to the fullest, life everlasting. I mean, we don't need to walk around with the chains of death hung on our necks. He doesn't want you to worship Him as some inanimate religious artifact, right? He's not buried. He's not on the cross. He's not in the tomb. It's empty, and Satan may have a grip on us today, but listen, he's trying to bind you with images of tombs in your life. But remember, the tomb is empty. That's the important part. It's a reminder that death is defeated. And to those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior, understand, the Bible says death has lost its sting. 
So not only has he defeated death, he says, hey, the same is going to be true of you. We're all going to get there one day, but Jesus says, I will carry you over. You're not going to be buried into eternal death if you know me. No, you're going to be raised to life as well. It reminds me of a little story of a father and son that were going down the road in their car. They had the windows down a little bit. And as they're going down the road, a bee flies in the car. Well, the little boy is highly allergic to bees of any type and stings. And so he goes into a panic trying to wave the bee away from him. His dad's trying to calm him down while he's driving, and, but the little boy will not be calmed. And finally, the father just pulls over to the side of the road quickly, and he was able to reach over and catch the bee in his hand. And he holds the bee, and he says, Son, it's okay, it's okay. And the boy's still scared to death of the bee. He said, No, 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 it's okay. Let me show you. And he opens his hand, and the bee is stuck to his hand because it stung him. He said, son, son, the sting is already over. It's done. I took it for you. It's okay. That's what Jesus wants us to know about this situation in life. The sting is gone. It's not possible with those who are God's now. The sting is gone. He says eternal life is yours. Resurrected life is yours. Difference in life is yours. All those who come to Christ are new creations. The old is past. Behold, all has become new. And that's a part of the resurrection story. It's lost its sting. So that's the second thing. Recognize the promise. All right, one last thing. We might get out early tonight. Ooh, how would that feel? I don't know. We'll see if I make it or not. Number three, rejoice in the victory. Rejoice in the victory. You know, rejoicing is, is pretty fun. Um, you know, we got, anybody got any, any of their team shirts on tonight? Anybody got any ball team shirts on? I see a Sutton shirt. All right, we got some people cheering for Sutton. Anybody wear a ball, ball team? Nobody? That's surprising. Huh? Oh, okay, all right. Don't it feel good to win? <laughs> you know? I mean, when, when our team wins, we're going we're gonna to make sure we show up to church with something on the next time, right? Um, and uh, I would probably have my Clemson shirt on tonight, uh, but they got put out last week in, the, in, in the, uh, the final eight, elite eight of the tournament that's going on in the NCAA right now. But, uh, you know, it feels good. And you know what we do after our team wins? What do we do? What's the stuff we do over the next couple of days? We talk trash to Kevin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> talk trash to who'd you say? Kevin. Oh, okay. I didn't want it to be personal. I just mean. <laughs> Hopefully the microphones didn't. Oh, Josh didn't have the mic set up. Good. Yeah, we talk trash. That's fun. We, we talk trash. And, and what else do we do? Put down as cowboys. Huh? Put down as cowboys. I don't understand what you're saying right now. Well, he already said that, talking trash. Y'all beating Kevin to death tonight, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, we do. We talk down the... But what else do we do if our team wins? Huh? How? How? All right, smile, what? Scream, yell. Scream, yell. <laughs> Say it again. Hey, <laughs> before the game is over, probably. Actually, people have it already built, and they're, they're waiting. <laughs> Three, two, one, because they want to be the first one. Oh, yeah, and all your friends, and it's starting, and the trash talking starts again. We put it on Facebook, and, and you know, we call up, we call up us, like, oh, did you watch the game? Yeah, man, we're, I mean, and, and man, we just go at it, and, it, and it's fun. I mean, I got to admit, it's fun. Uh, it's bad on the other side, but it's fun when you finally do win a game or so. And we have a ball with it. Hey, have at it. Have at it. Can I say, we can kind of do the same thing. <laughs> Jesus has given us such a victory in this life that I really don't understand why we don't carry the victory of the resurrection further than we do. Folks, can I tell you something? I'm going to make a prophecy here. I don't believe in that, but I'm going to do it. All right. Make a prophecy here. We will not have 607 people at church this Sunday. <laughs> Y'all think I'm going to be right? 
Why? Why not? You know? Is it only victorious one Sunday out of the year? I mean, it, I'm telling you, um, I'm, I told you at the beginning, brother, I'm nervous about this Sunday. I just, man, you just go, why, what, what, what? Why has it got to be that way? Oh, I will. I will be right here. <laughs> right here. When the count goes up, I will come in here and I will get on my knees because I didn't have enough faith. 32 years now of ministry. <laughs> I hope the record gets broken this Sunday. Um, but there's a lot of folks who will not carry the victory of Easter any further than last Sunday. This Sunday, it'll be back to whatever is important for this Sunday. Back to the other things in life that start to crowd out the resurrected Savior. What a shame. What a shame. First of all, if we're going to do that, I have a feeling we don't remember the nightmare. Because that alone by itself ought to be enough to guilt us into coming to church. But definitely when you go on this end, re rejoicing in the victory is where we kind of stop with this. It was empty, and they said, go tell, go tell, go tell, all through this story, right? Go tell my disciples. And they meet him. All right, go. Go tell. And so it wouldn't be long before Jesus himself was going to appear to Mary Magdalene, to all the apostles, and eventually to over 500 people that had a pretty neat story to tell going forward, a pretty big way to rejoice in the victory. Jesus sat down with them. He walked with them. He talked with them. He ate with them. Can I tell you something? Part of the victorious Christian life has to do with what happens to you and with you after you accept Him. As you plug into the body of Christ and Christ starts to fellowship with you as He talks about in the book of Revelation, I will come into Him and sup with Him. I will eat with Him and He with me. I will fellowship with you. And Jesus wants to have that type of relationship with us as the victory starts to be something we experience on a regular basis. Listen, you know I'm a worship leader. Is that high enough? Right there? Right there, thank you. Are y'all OCD? Kind of, I'm OCD on some things, so it kind of worries me. Okay. Y'all gonna, gonna fire me after tonight, aren't you? This guy is... Um, listen, I... I preached an entire sermon at the home today, and there was a dude asleep the entire time right there. <laughs> I'm not, I'm talking, he was all the way laid out, all the way like this. And the lady over here, after we got done, she came up to me and she was so mad. She said, I have never been madder in my life. I want to, <laughs> this is what she said, I wanted to shake the pudding out of him. <laughs> It's true. That is what she said to me. <laughs> I thought. <laughs> I said, it's, I, I told her, I said, he's probably medicated. Leave him alone. So just, he's okay. It's okay. Anyway, where in the world am I with that? But I was on the pudding. I don't know what that has to do with, but. Jesus wants to move forward with us in life. Oh yeah, that's where I'm at. With the resurrection in your life and, and what He desires to do. Oh, I'm a worship pastor. I'm all about rejoicing. I'm all about that. I love to see when it spills over in people and they can't help it. Um, you know, I've... Y'all see that I have... Um, I've, Bob is playing bass in here now, and, and so I've handed that off. And I've still got my Britney Spears microphone here. So I'm up there leading with my, my microphone on like this, and that's my fear that I'm, you know, when I'm leading, I'm like, 
I can't help it. I'm all over the place. It's just who I am. And I even, I've even been told I have spirit fingers by someone in the room. Won't say who that was, but sometimes when I lead, that I do spirit fingers. Y'all know what the cheerleaders do? I had to get them to explain that to me. I couldn't remember what that was. But anyway, but... You know, I got to admit, I mean, there are times when, when I'm leading that it, it man, the, the victory spills over in me when I'm singing sometimes I'm leading. And y'all know I'm a blubbering crybaby sometimes, and it's embarrassing to me, but man, the, the victory is there. And I, I love that. I love that. And we can really live in victory with Jesus. <laughs> and I'm not telling you that's what you have to do. Some people, this is what the victory looks like to them. We've got them in our church. We've had them in every church that I've been to. They live in victory just like this. And I just, okay, leave them alone. They're fine. Um, and uh, anyway, I do it a different way. So don't, don't mess with my victory. I won't mess with yours, right? Um, listen, Jesus, can, uh, Jesus is not, in my theology, Jesus is not a nebulous force that is out there somewhere that doesn't care about you in your life, that just stands at a distance and watches you and just says, good luck with that. That is not the God that I know, that I read about, that I serve. That is not Him, because I've engaged with Him and I know differently, and I understand the victory that can happen. But there's so many people, they come to Jesus, or they sort of come to Jesus. I don't even know how to, what to say about it. Some folks, some folks co to, come to him and they just never tap into it. I talked about it a few weeks ago when I talked about the lady that <laughs> didn't hit the light switch on her new power. And, and I'm afraid some people just stop right there. And what a shame, what an almighty shame when people stop short of a deep relationship, love relationship with the Lord and really plug in because they miss out on the good stuff, right? They stop short of enjoying their Christianity and understanding what that means. Because there's a difference between knowing about Him and really knowing Him, right? I mean, I know who Taylor Swift is tonight, you know? I know some things about Taylor Swift. Um, and there she is, you know? And I know some things about President Trump, right? I know, whatever. I know LeBron James. Not really. I know about him, you know, and I know all this stuff. Um, but I don't know them. I don't know none of them. Did y'all know my name is Donald J, by the way? <laughs> it is. It's kind of weird. But anyway, I, I still don't, I still don't know. I still don't, I don't know them. And I probably will never, I'll never get to a place with any of them. So whether I'm a fan or not of any of those people, it wouldn't matter if I wear the t-shirts. It wouldn't matter. All right? Because I'm, I'm never going to really, really, really know any of them. But folks, tonight, can I tell you, I know Jesus. I know Him. And you can never talk me down off of what he's done in my life. Never. I'm committed to him. I felt the power of the resurrection in my life. I know what the crucifixion meant, and I know about the rejoicing in my Lord tonight. And I don't want to forget that as I go through the next year. Look, you can put up your Easter decorations, um, and but with when you put it up, don't put it up. Right? Don't do it. Don't lose the excitement of the victory that surrounds the resurrection. Um, years ago, Tyler and I, my son, my oldest son, we were working on one of his cars. Um, and the car had to be running for whatever we were doing. I was trying to think back exactly what it was, but I can't remember. But, but the car had to be running, so there I stood with my screwdriver over there, and it's running, and I'm making some sort of adjustment. I don't remember. Anyway, I drop my screwdriver while it's running, and it falls right down in, in by one of the pulleys. <laughs> and there it goes. And you can hear it. It sounds like Grandpa's grinder in the shed. 
I mean, it was. <laughs> Tyler, turn the car off, turn the car off, turn the car off. <laughs> so he runs around, he turns the car off, and I pull that, I pull that screwdriver out of there, and it's history. It is not a flathead, it's not a Phillips, it is a nub. It's a nothing. <laughs> it is worthless at that point. However, it's a craftsman. So, I looked at that, that craftsman, and I said, huh. And I said, I'm going to put this in my truck. Next time I go by Sears over yonder, I'm going to stop in. So I did. I stopped in, and I walked in with my screwdriver, kind of sheepishly, <laughs> walked over to the dude, and I said, hey, I'm about to try out the old warranty for Craftsman. He said, oh, yeah? I said, yeah. So I took it out and proudly laid it on the counter. He looked at it and said, oh, <laughs> so, yeah, I know. And so I just told him the story. Here's what happened. I said, all right, look, I'm not going to be mad at you for whatever you decide to do at this moment. I've just heard hearsay about what you can do with Craftsman stuff, and I wanted to see how far you'd go with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. And he said, <clears throat> I'm not trying to be funny. Yeah. Anyway, he says, go pick out another one. Whatever it was, go pick out it. So I had to take it with me to match it up because the end was gone. So we went, matched it up to what I think was the size of whatever it was, came back to the counter, and, and I said, do I need to sign something? Nope. You're good to go. And, uh, and I left him the old one and walked out with my new screwdriver, and I laughed. I laughed about it thinking, <laughs> I, I mean, I walked out as happy as a tornado in a trailer park with that. <laughs> I thought that was the greatest thing. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't but a $6 screwdriver, but man, I was at fault. I was the one that made that happen. And I came out with the new screwdriver, right? Can I tell you something about this whole Easter story and resurrection and everything? Can I? I'm so <laughs> Y'all ain't never heard that. Come on, I know you've heard that. Um, but here's the thing. Every one of us in our life have ground our screwdrivers off to a nub. And then <laughs> worthless we are a bunch of can I call us sinners here tonight that ain't worth nothing no more. <laughs> and the promise of the resurrection says it doesn't matter. I know it's your, God says I know it's your fault. I knew that before you knew it was your fault. I knew that before I created the world. You're not telling me anything new. I knew you're a mess up. You're a screw up. You need forgiveness. You need a savior. I knew all this. And the promise is st it still stands. But you don't understand, God, I'm really bad. Okay. <laughs> Remember Friday, the nightmare took care of that. Now come on. Let's get on with it. Let's let the power of the resurrection do its thing in your life. Uh, God will never turn us down. And we've got a whole year to spread that kind of good news and rejoice in the victory, right? <sighs> Lord, tonight I, I just... I love Scripture. I love what it says. I love how it, it hits me and it, and it and gets into my heart and it just, it just bubbles over sometimes into rejoicing because, <laughs> man, I don't deserve it. How, 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 why? I, I don't get it. Why would you love me? Why would you do that? But man, I stand here tonight forgiven on my way to heaven. Thank you for the power of the resurrection. I've seen what it's done in my life and in my family and my kids, my home. I don't deserve any of that. Even today, I disappoint you so many times. Thank you for still taking me back. Help me to live the Easter all year. Help me to have the victory all year. People need to see it. They need to believe it. And Lord, if I walk in the truth and let you flow through me and your Holy Spirit, they will see what they need to see. And they'll be, they'll be attracted to you. 
they'll, they'll see that and they'll go, man, I want that too. With everybody in this room that has accepted you, if we go out of here on mission over the next year in the power of the resurrection, I can't even imagine what could happen if we took the power of the resurrection and lived in victory and shared it like you commanded us to do while you're being ascended into heaven. Ah, we can't even imagine. 600 people here wouldn't even be close. You want to do so much more. So help us to be a part of what you're doing. And we thank you that you're listening to us as a risen, living Lord tonight. Bless us as we go. We pray in Jesus' mighty, righteous, glorious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, try to remember the announcements uh, for the weekend. Um, again, my commercial for the parenting class. That will be Sunday night during church. It is not taking place of Sunday night church. Don't misunderstand that. Sunday night church is still happening here. The rest of the folks that signed up, if you didn't sign up and you're like, oh man, I missed out. I got a few extra books. Come on anyway, okay? We'll have it over in the, um, in the Family Life Center. God bless you. Take time to fellowship, and uh, hopefully we'll see you this Sunday.